Okay, we are going to get started in creating divs. Now, divs can be used for many things, and indeed, divs are really the foundation for modern web design pages. This short tutorial and the one after it is going to get you started in the area of divs, although you could probably spend uh, dozens of hours learning about divs, how people have applied them, how to troubleshoot them, etc. So once again, this is just to get you started. <coughs> I have started this particular page with uh, some default settings, as I've talked about in my previous tutorials. I've got my universal selector, which clears everything out. I've set a default background of white. I've set um, a default font of uh, Verdano with a particular size, etc. So now I feel like I'm ready to start in on creating some content here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply insert divs. This is with nothing on the page. I go to insert layout object div tag and <clears throat> I'm going to simply do it at the insertion point here and I'm going to give it an ID of box one. Now all I'm doing is creating the framework. This is in essence creating something like an HTML tag. I must create a rule that goes along with it eventually so I can manipulate it. For the moment though, I don't need to. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now divs have this terrible characteristic of collapsing in on themselves if there's no content in the box. So while the div may be there, if there's nothing in it, it kind of disappears on us. So Dreamweaver is doing us a favor by putting in some placeholder content here, right? So I can see that here's my content for ID box one. That's fairly straightforward. Now I'm going to go ahead and click in and <clears throat> create a new box. Now if I'm having a hard time clicking in and creating a new box after this, I'll show you how I can do that as well. So basically clicking anywhere, I'm going to go ahead and click on insert layout object div tag. This time I don't want to wrap around the selection. I want to click in and say after the tag of div box one. So I know I already have my box one in there and I want this new div tag to start after that box one. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one box two. And similar situation, I'd probably want to create a CSS rule eventually, CSS rule eventually, but for now this is okay. I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that. And once again, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and click on Insert Layout Object Div Tag. And I'm going to, once again, make sure I do it after Tag, but this time after Box 2. And I'm going to call this Box 3 and click OK. So I'm going to, for the sake of this exercise, leave these three content pieces in here um, just to have something to hold those open. You can certainly leave it as content as the default or you can just rename it to box one, two, and three. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make a rule. Divs by default will expand left to right 100% of its parent element, in this case the page, unless there's a rule that says that it's something different. So let's go ahead and click into div box one and let's go ahead and come over and make a new rule for it. I'm going to go to my CSS panel and click on my plus sign. And because I'd clicked into div box one, it tells me what this is. And I can see up here um, of my choices that are up here, class is not what I'm doing. I'm doing a div, which is different from a class. And I'm not doing an HTML tag. And I'm doing a very simple div, so it's not a compound. So the ID is uh, correct here. So I'm going to click OK. Now in this particular box, I could choose a different font if I wanted to. <clears throat> and I could choose a font, um, since I have my base size as uh, 16 pixels, let me go with 1.5 M's. That would be one and a half times the base font of 16, right? And I can go ahead and say that my background color, just for the sake of this uh, exercise, is going to be perhaps a light green. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and apply it just so I can kind of see what's happening here in the background, right? I can see that there's my uh, content up there, there's my dark, uh, my 
my light green background, etc. However, the box is still going the entire width of the piece. So now I'm going to come over here to my box element and I'm going to select that I want this box to be 200 pixels wide. Now, from a layout position standpoint, I could certainly use M's, percentages, etc. That makes the flow flexible. It makes it relative, meaning that if, for example, I had 200%, uh, percent, or excuse me, that doesn't make sense, 20% of the uh, overall piece, then no matter what size screen I'm looking at, this box would never be more than 20% of the screen. Similar if I'd said the other box was another 20% of the screen, um, and then the other box was perhaps 60% of the screen. Percentages allow us to do relative positioning. So do M's. For this positioning though, however, because I'm just um, presenting some basic information on divs, I want to kind of get concrete and go with pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this box is going to have 200 pixels. Now I could also specify a height, but generally speaking I don't need to do that simply because I want to let the height contain all the content. So if I set a height of say 100 pixels but I put in you know 400 pixels worth of information then I'd cut myself off. So for the moment I'm going to leave the uh, width alone. I'm going to go ahead and click apply and click OK and there it goes. Okay. Now in this particular case <clears throat> once I go ahead and create that rule I see my rule sitting right over here. Here's my box number one rule. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and do those same types of rules for my box two and my box three as well. Um, I'm going to come over here to my box two. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to uh, make his background color slightly different and I'm going to choose his box to be another um, <clears throat> excuse me let me go ahead and go with uh, 400 pixels wide and click OK and then my third box I'm going to similarly do a rule for that one <clears throat> and I'm going to make this background I'm going to make him the same color actually as my other background and I'm going to make this box to balance that out at 200 pixels wide <clears throat> So now I have, <clears throat> excuse me, three boxes and they are all stacked to the left. And that's because I've done nothing but give a rule for the size of the box. So as long as I've given a rule for the size of the box, everything's going to continue to stack up to the left hand side. The next step of positioning our boxes once they are made is to learn how to move them around. Now in this particular case I don't have these boxes sitting in a wrapper or any other kind of larger container box. So it's only the page that's actually governing the positioning here. And because the page is kind of squished down to 800 pixels wide here, I know I'm going to be okay, but if in fact I were on a smaller page then I would start to see some weird things happening on these boxes. Um, in this particular case I want to um, position these things basically right next to each other across the page. There's multiple techniques to do this but probably the most straightforward is to go ahead and float all of these images or excuse me all of these divs to the left hand side. Now you might think that these are already floated to the left here because they're all kind of stacked up to the left. Remember that what you're seeing right now is just the default behavior of the boxes. Positioning really has not happened. You're just seeing the default. So if I go ahead and click on box one, click on my element called box one, and make sure I'm doing box one over here, um, I'm going to go ahead and edit the rule. Now keep in mind, I've clicked here, I've clicked here, I've clicked here. The most important place to click is right over here, the box one on this element. But I do all three of them just to make sure that visually I'm keyed into the correct um, element that I want to work on and indeed I am. So I'm going to click on my pencil and now I'm going to go to my box element and I want to tell it to float to the left. Now once I tell it to float to the left a couple of things are going to happen. 
first of all, my pink box is all of a sudden going to once again take over its natural behavior, which is to float left and up or default left and up regardless of what's on top. So if I go ahead and click OK, what has happened is my pink box has done the same thing that it had been doing before, but now it's underwriting the box one so that it in effect is collapsed into half of it. If I click on it, I can see the outline of really where the box is. In order for that box to show fully, I now need to apply a float left rule to box number two. So once again, I'm going to click on box two, click on my pencil, come over here to box, and I'm going to click on float left and apply. Now, same thing happened. My, my uh, 400 pixel block did the right thing. It went out to the uh, uh, right hand side of this because I've basically stacked these up against each other, both of them floating left but my third box has tried to sneak up underneath my first box. Again, that is the default. It's perfectly expected behavior, but it, to overcome it, we now need to go to box three, and yet again, we need to float that to the left as well. So we're going to click on float left and OK. And there we have all three boxes lined up the way we would want them. Now, we could go a step further and talk about buffering spaces between these boxes. If I wanted the boxes um, slapped up right against each other the way they are, then I would probably play with the um, padding in this particular box just to get a little bit of space between the content and the wall of this. So that's box two. I'm going to go to box two. And this time I'm going to go to my box area. I'm going to uncheck my padding. I really don't want to play with my top uh, or bottom because that would um, take things out of, out of line. But if I go ahead and click on 10, I can click OK. And now notice that that pushes that over just slightly. Same thing over here with box 3. I can do the same thing and uncheck that padding and uh, for all and do 10 pixels on the left hand side and that's going to force my box to come out however I can also then see that this one gosh I need to do it there too so box one <clears throat> uncheck the padding and go to 10 and click OK so that's one way to buffer the padding away from each of those places Another way that I could deal with it is, for example, here in my box two, I could go to box two, click on my pencil, go to my box, and this time I'm going to uncheck margins. And I'm going to say my right margin is 10. Actually, I'm going to just say my right margin is 5, and my left margin is 5. Oops, 5. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now what that has done for me is put this uh, little sliver of of white space in between this box and the box to its left and its right. That's because I set those margins left and right. Okay, I want you to follow this exercise, create exactly this page, and I want you to save this as learningdiv1.html, learningdiv1.html, save it in your module portfolio folder, and then eventually I would like you to um, link to this file from your instructional design menu.